Hello and welcome everyone to this video on using SAP or data for data extraction by Zarin Tech. But before we begin, make sure to subscribe to our Zarin Tech YouTube channel and hit the bell icon to never miss any update from us. So hello everyone. In this video, we are going to understand the concept of OData for data extraction. Now, what is the meaning of OData? So it is a standardized protocol for creating and consuming data application interface. And we can use it to perform crude operations on our SAP databases. And it mainly acts as a backend for our SAP UI5 or Fiori applications. So it provides a uniform way to query and update data, making it easier to integrate different systems and applications. So here is an overview how we can use for our OData for data extraction. So what is the meaning of this data extraction? So the simple meaning of data extraction is getting your data from your databases. And since OData acts as a bridge, so we can use this concept of OData to extract our data from which are mainly residing in our SAP databases. So these are some of the key concept of OData, which we will see. The first one is entity. So it mainly, entity is nothing, but it is a, like a an work area. So it simply stores a single record, like a row in a table. Then we have an entity set. It is similar to an internal table, which can store multiple records. Then we have a property. And it property is like a single piece of data with an an entity like a column in a table. Then we in navigation property, navigation that now the term itself is suggesting that is the property which we will be defining in our OData services from navigation for using the concept of navigation. That is, if you want to navigate from header to item, then you can define the navigation property here. So let's create a OData project to fetch a single record which I will be showing on here. Let's see this. Suppose I'll go to SE 11 and I'm going to show you, I have got this employee table. And suppose I want to fetch the details of a, uh, my user wants, he wants to give the value of employee ID from the front end application. And he want to get the details from this, which is mainly stored in my this table. So I'll be developing a OData project for it. Now see why will we be developing our OData project for it. So for that purpose, we will be going to SEZW transaction code, SEZW, go to SEZW and create a OData project. So I'm giving the name as OData for data extraction. Data extraction. And you need to give a description as O data for data extraction. What you will do here, you will give the name of the package name. Click OK. So as you know, as you will create any O data project, you will get the main four folders here. So for in the data model, you will be have to create entity and entity set. And what is an entity? Entity is nothing but it is like a work area which can hold a single record. Then we have our entity set, which we can hold more than one record at a time. So we will right click on it to create entity or entity set and we'll go to import and we will be using our table. So for that purpose, we'll go to DDIC structure. And I'm giving the name of my entity as employee and I will simply copy this table name and here I will paste it. Don't forget to mark this checkbox so that uh, your entity set, default entity set will be created with the name of employee and set, and a set will be added after it. Now click on next button and select the fields which you want. Suppose I don't want this mandate and salary field. Click on next, mark the primary key and click on finish. Also see, I have got one of records from 101 to 105, which I'll be fetching from our front end application. Now we have got our entity and entity set created. See in this entity set, you can see employee set and entity types, you can see this value. Then we will be click clicking on this generate button so that our MPC and DPC extension class can be generated, assign the package name here. Press enter. All right. 
go to runtime artifacts and go to DPC extension class. In the DPC extension class, you will see the various methods which are inherited from the interfaces and which we can use for performing the crude operation. See, create entity, delete entity, get entity, get entity set, and update entity set. For my current requirement, I need to use the concept of, I need to use this method get entity so that I can fetch a single record at a time. So I'll right click on it and I'll go to redefine. Simply remove this commented method because I don't have any need for it. I don't need this, so I have simply removed it. Now see, whatever the value of employee ID you will be providing from your front-end application, it will be received in this IT key tab parameter. And if you will double click here, let me show it to you. We will be getting a value of, you can see we have this structure and then in this structure we have got two fields, name and value. The name of the employee ID will be passed here and its value will be passed here. So what I will do here, I will simply read this table. Read table IT key tab. IT key tab into, I will define a work area at the runtime here, LS key. And since I am passing only a single record, so I can simply use here index one. And if size of RC equals to zero, that is, if my read statement is true and it is fetching some data, then I can write the select query here. And what will be my select query? Select single star from, why am I using the concept of single star here? Because I want to fetch only a single record and I'm that's why I am implementing this get entity method. That is, I want to get only a single entity, which is my current requirement. Simply copy this table name and paste it here. Into. Into where? Now see, if this parameter IT key tab is receiving the input from the output screen, sorry, receiving the input from the front-end application, then this er underscore entity parameter will be sending the details to the front end application. So into corresponding fields of er underscore entity, where the value of employee ID is going to be ls underscore key. You see, this is my work area, ls underscore key, and its value. Simply, I'm passing it here. Now I'll click on this activate button to activate my OData project. Perfect. So I've written this, I've implemented this get entity method. Now I'll go back to it. Now we need to register our OData service to our gateway client. A gateway client is nothing but a place where we can test our OData services. Also we can check for our logs in OData services. Error log we can also check using our OData. Uh, sorry, we can use SAP Gateway for checking our error log as well. Now see, click on this register button. Assign the local because you want to perform a local testing first. Then you can in the package assignment, assign the package name. Perfect. As soon as you will register your OData to Gateway client, you will see the registration status as green. Now simply click on this SAP Gateway client. Perfect. Click on this execute button. You will see we are getting the status message here as green. Now, what is the meaning of this green status? So, the meaning of this green status is that our OData services is working perfectly. We will click on this entity set and we will assign the entity set here. Now, see, we have implemented our get entity method. So, we need to pass the value of entity for the value of employee ID from here. So I'll simply use this, here I will pass the value of employee ID. For that purpose, go to data model, employee and navigation, sorry, in properties, you will, you need to copy the value of this employee ID because the naming convention matters here. So in, pass this employee ID equals to single quotes, the value of employee ID, and then close the parenthesis. Now click on this execute button and see, we are getting our first record. 
for our one zero one values. Now, if we want to see this in JSON format, so simply select format JSON and click on execute. See, we are getting our value of one zero one. If I want to see the value of one zero two here, click on execute. We can see the value of one zero two, or if you want to see the value of 103, click on execute, you can see the value of 103. So this is how you can use your OData services for that purpose of data extraction that you need to understand. Okay, so this is how we can implement our OData and we can use it for data extraction. Okay, fine. So this is all about our data extraction. Thank you very much.